Hey everyone, welcome back. Kimberly Casper here, and today I want to take a look at a plugin that is one of my favorite ways to get social media syndication buttons on your blog. Okay, now I've pulled up this example here that I'm currently using, and you can see that there are social media syndication buttons of like every shape and size. And then we got Yahoo and Facebook and comments and Twitter and Google Buzz and StumbleUpon and Dig and Blog Engage and Facebook Like. Now, while you don't need all of these, and in fact, that's a bit overkill, we definitely want to take a look at how to get some buttons like this on your blog. Now, you could do all of these with individual plugins, but that creates a lot of headache. And in fact, if you're using the plugin for just the TweetMem button, and then the plugin for just the Facebook button, which is simple Facebook share that a lot of people like, you're probably going to find that you get some alignment problems. They don't line up right. They want to float up into, for example, if you're using what would Seth Gooden do type plugin, they, they don't always want to stay where they belong. Okay, and they can be more fuss than they're worth. Well, there's a great plugin called Dig Dig, and that's two words, but it's the same word over and over. Okay, and it is a plugin that gives us a whole list of possible buttons. They all work together. They, you can set the alignment in them. You can set what order they appear in. You can set whether they're left to right, left to left, right to left, top to bottom, horizontal, vertical. You can do all kinds of stuff with them, all within one plugin. Okay, so we're going to take a look at that today. Now, I've got a lot of them turned on just to show you what they look like. And here you can see that I've got a lot of this going on. You don't necessarily need that many. Let me give you an example of some other views of how you can make these look. Here on Jackie's blog, she's using a right float and a vertical and the compact version of these buttons. And you can see that it makes it nice and tight, these little, this little really neat format. I really like this layout. And this works really well on some blogs, okay? When you don't want these to be predominant to the eye, when you want them to be there, to be available, and the numbers to kind of call attention, but when you don't want them to overwhelm the post, particularly if the colors clash with your blog. Okay, another example would be uh, Kelly Hosaka's blog, and here she's just got the Facebook share, the Twitter button, and the Facebook like. Okay, and she's got the three, and you can see how they sit really nicely under the What Would Seth Good and Do box. And they, they do, they play nice, they don't get in the way of other things, and they just handle the way you would expect them to handle, unlike when you're using a whole bunch of plugins to get ex essentially the same result, you may have to fuss with the layout. And then Sue Price here is using a horizontal alignment of the compact view. And this is all the same plugin. All of these effects that we're getting, this different look, all the same plugin. You can get whatever you want, okay? In fact, you also can get the side floating buttons, the Ajax float buttons, such as sites like Mashable are using. Now, the Ajax float still needs some tinkering with. They give you a code block there. And you may have to adjust it depending on your theme because not all themes are the same width. And so it's kind of still in development, but it's definitely there and available for you as well. And let's come back to our blog. And I've got a, a fresh install blog up here that I'm working on. And I'm going to click in plugins and I'm in add new and I'm going to search for dig, dig. Two words. Don't run it together or you won't find any results. It comes up as the first one. Install now. Yes, we want to install. Activate plugin. And now in the proper routine of all plugins, we installed, we activated, now we need to do its settings. So you come down here on the left, under settings, you open the drop down if it's closed, and you find dig dig. And here you're going to find what feels like a lot of settings, but don't let this throw you, okay? because this plugin is just really flexible. There's a lot of things you can do with it, but there's not a lot of ways you can break it, which is really nice. Button display. By default, it's on posts only. Okay. A lot of people, sometimes you'll want to put it on pages, but if you're doing sales pages on your blog, you won't want to do this, because then it would turn up on your sales pages, or then it would turn up on you know pages that it just doesn't look right on. And so you can not do that. Home works on some themes, but not all themes, okay? For example, if you're on Thesis and using the little magazine view um, teasers, if you're using the little short boxes, and you set them to home, the buttons don't fit. 
And so you get some error results. It looks really funny. You may not be able to figure out what's going on. You've probably got it on home where it doesn't work. Now, some themes do really well. They have a nice wide excerpt box, and there's plenty of room there to put the buttons. So that really depends on your theme. Look at how it works for you. Category display, generally we don't touch that. Buttons line up horizontal or vertical. It's just a drop-down box. Pick which one works for you. Button configuration, okay, and we're going to go through this. This looks a little overwhelming, kind of because it can be, but I'll go into it in just a moment. Keep scrolling down. Come to Tweet Mem configuration. We're going to set up this Twitter button, the Tweet Mem button, but we want to make sure that we put our Twitter ID in here, okay? This is really important, or the Tweet Mem button won't include our Twitter ID. We won't see the mentions when we look at our, at our tweets in Hootsuite. And, you know, you don't get a chance to say thank you to people that shared your content. Okay, I'll save, con save changes in just a moment. This is the setup for Ajax, for that floating side. Now, a lot of people are still not using it because it does still require some tinkering. So, by default, it's disabled, and we're just going to leave it that way. I'm going to click Save Changes on the TweetMem configuration. Okay, now that that's saved, we're going to come back down and we're going to do button configuration. This impacts what order they appear in, whether they go to, whether they float to the left side, whether they float to the right side, and which one is left or top most versus which one is right or bottom most. Okay, that's the weighting. So let's say we're going to set up three buttons. We're going to set up dig. Tweet Mem and Facebook Share. Okay, so and let's say we want to right float them, so we're going to set right float, right float, and right float. Okay, so now those three are on, they're turned on, they're going to show up. The button design do we want them normal or compact? Not all of these have a compact view, but many do, and the weighting. 100 would be upper left most. Upper if you're vertical, left if you're horizontal most. So this weighting, 100, dig dig would be on the left, then 96, tweet men would be in the middle, and 95, Facebook would be on the right. Okay, also for lazy loading, something I figured out though all I was took a clip there out of the video. Turn the Facebook like off of lazy loading. And I'm gonna come down, we're gonna save again. And we can open the page. And we can again see them properly loading like that. Okay, and you saw how the like button, because it wasn't set to lazy load, it went ahead and loaded right away. This lets the page load and then lets the buttons come in after most other things are loaded. Now, truth be told, I'm not using the lazy loading on my blog, but it can help at times. It really depends on what else is going on, and there's more about that on the plugins page. Okay? All right. That is all there is to Dig Dig. I know that's a little extensive, and I know it feels kind of overwhelming. But this will help make upgrading and keeping all your buttons together and doing what they should be doing really simple and straightforward. This is an early plug-in, something you want to install even when you're not running a lot of other things. It's nice and stable. It doesn't tend to conflict with other things. The only real downside to this plug-in is the developer updates really, really often. And sometimes he doesn't update and the updates themselves be really stable. So like the recommendation for all plugins, always wait a week before updating, okay? Just because he pushes a new update today, unless you've heard through the community or heard, you know, through my blog or heard, you know, through the, the WordPress community that there was a security vulnerability, generally speaking, you want to wait a week for upgrades, okay? And this plugin is a really good example because it does tend to release with some upgrades that, that sometimes are a little finicky. All right, that's all there is to Dig Dig. I think you're going to love it. You take care, and I'll see you on the social media shares.